Okay, this afternoon I'll be teaching the rainstorm. I'm not sure if you can hear it, but we have a little bit of thunder out there and some rain hitting the house. <laughs> nice day to teach. Okay, today we're going to look at Hadrian. And uh, after you watch the video or watch the slideshow, I do want you to answer some questions. Are artifacts important? Do we need to maintain the buildings, documents, and stories of our ancestors? And what value does history have? That's the assignment. Now, if you want to take it further, the extension is, tell me about some artifacts that you've seen. They can be family heirlooms or family artifacts, or they can be general history stuff. Where have you gone? Have you seen different artifacts, actual historical items? Okay, with that, let's go on to Hadrian. Hadrian's actually my favorite emperor, period. Uh, he is pretty cool. There's a lot of stuff I like about Hadrian. Uh, and going with the theme of this week, one thing I mostly like about him is he's a builder. He built quite a few things. Uh, again, he follows Trajan, and we'll talk about how he gets in line behind Trajan here, too. Um, okay. Hadrian. Oh, man, I'm almost over top of him. I don't like that. Sacrilegious. Uh, Hadrian was married to Trajan's grandniece, Vibia Sabina. But really... He had an in with Trajan's wife, Platonia, uh, Platina. Um, I'm not sure exactly what the relationship was, but when Hadrian, when Trajan was dying, Hadrian was named his heir two days before Trajan died. And a lot of people looked at that and th whether they were very suspicious about that. There was a lot of conspiracy, conspiracy theories that he had something to do or... Um, Trajan's wife had something to do with Hadrian being bumped up on that succession. Now, what I found what I find most amazing about Trajan, besides his building, is that he toured the borders. He went all around Rome, the empire, and he froze the borders. He didn't expand. He wanted to solidify the borders and make it um, very solid. Um, and so he went around, took four years, and toured the border regions and. and traveled all the way across the Roman Empire. Um, some people think it was there, he did that to satisfy his own natural curiosity. If you remember, we talked about Alexander the Great. Uh, one of the theories is that Alexander conquered so much territory because he wanted to learn. Maybe Hadrian wanted to learn, that's why he circumnavigated that. Now he built the Pantheon, my all time favorite building, and I haven't been here yet, but he built his, uh, his villa in Tivoli. And I'd love to go there. And then he also built Hadrian's Wall. That's what we'll focus on mostly. Now, the Pantheon. Oh, my goodness. And again, sacrilegious. I'm over top of the Pantheon there. That's not good. Uh, what is super cool is if you look up at the top of the Pantheon, this is the third Pantheon that was built. The first two had been destroyed. Now, this one, he put Agrippa's name at the top. Now, if you remember Agrippa, Agrippa was best friends with Augustus. And so 100 years prior to Hadrian becoming emperor, Augustus's best friend Agrippa had built one of the original pantheons. Uh, it had burned down, and then the second one also burned down and with shortly before um, Hadrian became emperor. But what's really cool about this is he put uh, Agrippa's name back at the top of the pantheon. Now the Pantheon, when you walk inside, the whole top right there is 30 feet across. And it lets in this beautiful light into this poured concrete dome. Um, the walls are 20 feet thick because gravity wants to pull this dome down and the wall or the, the dome itself tapers. And I've seen some diagrams that show a 150 foot ball that fits inside the Pantheon. I think it's about 140 something to 150 feet in diameter. Now, it's not a perfect building. If you look right here, uh, there's a seam right there. You can see it up here, too. It looks like they wanted to have this roof be taller. Um, I think these columns are only 40 feet tall, and it should have taken like 50 or a little bit longer columns to fit. Uh, one theory is that when he ordered the columns, they sank and never made it to Rome. Uh, now, this is what I really want to see, or I want you to see. Hadrian's Wall. I love Hadrian's Wall. Several years ago, we went there. Uh, we hiked along part of it. We didn't do the whole thing. One of my goals 
In fact, we talked about it during, we talked about during it this summer. One of my goals is to walk from Newcastle upon the Tyne all the way to Donis on Selway. Now they have it going the other way from west to east. Uh, I've seen this book, I believe, goes east to west. And I have walked portions of it. I've seen Corbridge, um, Hexham, uh, Chester's, all the forts, all the way up to um, Bindalanda. And we'll finish off with Bindalanda. Oh, there's Bindalanda. We'll put Housestead, Bindalanda. It's really cool. I love that walk. Now, when he built this wall, okay, he came out and toured this wall in northern England. This is not the border between Scotland. You can see Scotland over here and England. The border of Scotland and England tra travels up that way, kind of north and east. But the wall, okay, when he came out, he selected a, oh, let's see the wall diagram first. Okay, the wall diagram, uh, they build a ditch. This is the north side of the wall. They build a ditch, so if you're getting attacked, the attackers have to go through the ditch, there's the wall. And then you have these things called the vallum, a ditch in the back. If you do aerial photography, you can actually see that. Um, what's really sad is this is wall under road. Um, parts of the wall are gone. In fact, that center portion of England is where the most remnants are of the wall. Uh, now, he chose a section of England like this. Okay? This to the left is the north side of the wall. And this to the south, he put the wall on top of this ridge. Uh, and so he used that natural geography to fortify that wall. Now, along the wall, you have 80 mile castles. This is not a mile castle. A mile castle might house about 60 soldiers. Uh, this is just a, um, I think every third of a mile, they had a small uh, castle or tower where they'd have smaller units stationed. But the mile castles, like I said, they had about 60 people. Then they had 17 larger forts that were on the wall. Okay, but behind the wall, Further to the south, they had other supporting troops and more forts. Um, what's really cool is I think Chester's had a bath that was very popular. And so soldiers would walk the Chester's to bathe because bathing in Rome, and we'll look at some Roman baths. Oh, I hope we get to look at some Roman baths. Roman baths were very popular. Now, uh, the Vindalanda, and yes, this is in German, but that's okay. Uh, but Vindalanda is one of those forts that's not on the wall. And I did want to throw this up because the main thing I want to show you is that along the, or next to the fort, you often have these businesses established to service the soldiers. Now, all forts have the same layout. The commander's tent or commander's house is in the center of the building or center of the fort. Uh, the, the soldiers are on the wings and they would typically put the bathroom in the lowest corner. Now, that they were always laid up the same way. And so when you walked into a fort, you never had to ask for directions. You could walk straight to where you needed to be. Very efficient. Uh, the coolest thing about Vindalanda is its soil. Okay, it became a garbage dump. Okay, they threw things away. And as they threw things away, uh, later on, archaeologists within the last 50 years were able to find different artifacts. One thing they found was a Roman mailbox that housed, or didn't house, but it had hundreds of letters that the Romans had written on shavings of wood back to back and forth to Rome. And so you can see how they wrote to each other. And a lot of these um, letters are in the British Museum, but they also have them deciphered up north at Vindalanda. And if you ever go to Vindalanda in the museum uh, down behind the fort, you can actually go in and read some of these letters. Another thing they have that's really cool is a bunch of shoes. Uh, they have little baby shoes. They have big shoes. They have shoes for men, women, kids, everything. But when your shoe broke back then, you threw it away. And then you'd make another mate to the one you had to, to, to wear. Another day, thing they found in Vindalanda is underneath one of the shoulder, soldiers' beds, the body of a kid. They theorized that this soldier cured, killed the commander's kid and couldn't get the body out, and so he buried the body under his bed. I don't know if the soldier was ever caught. Maybe so, maybe not. It's, it's really tough to say. But Vindalanda is very cool. Now, the wall, about 80 miles long, um, 
Here is a portion of the wall. And this is the uh, part of the wall that's very close to Vindalanda. I think just a little bit to the west of here is a place called Once Brood or Twice Brood, I forget. Um, but this is called Sycamore's Gap. Uh, this is a, just a very picturesque place I'm looking north. A lot of the wall, the rocks were taken down by uh, farmers, uh, English farmers. They'd use these rocks to build their own houses or fences for the fields, that sort of thing. Uh, but there's about a stretch of about 20 to 30 miles in the center of England where the wall is best preserved. Some places it's just foundations. Okay, Kind of sad to see that. Um, now the wall, you can walk right along it, you can touch it, you can walk into the forts, walk all around. They do have some places roped off, but most people are pretty respectful. Okay, there are the sources, mostly picture sources. Love the wall, love traveling there. I wish I can go back. Uh, if you get a chance, travel, go see the wall. Uh, again, after you've seen this, Artifacts, are they important? Do we need to maintain buildings and artifacts and all those fun things? Okay, what's the value of history? Does history have a value? Okay, if you want to do your extension, tell me about some of the things that you want to talk about. Really good to talk to you. Really glad the rain passed. And I'll talk to you guys again soon.